messengers as bringers of good tidings and warners so that mankind will have no argument against Allah after the messengers. And ever is Allah exalted in might and wise. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I keep thinking about what we were talking about before in the Quran, uh, how it starts out in the beginning. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. The praise or all the worship or all devotion, all the thanksgiving is for who? Allah. 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 And the message that Muhammad came with is the same message that all the prophets came with, which is there's one God and you have to worship him. There's no God except him and you have to give him your worship. It's two things, really. It's about your belief. It's about what's in here or here. But it's also about what you do. You can't just say, oh, being nice is good, but then you're a bad person. That doesn't make any sense. If you said, telling the truth is a good thing, but then you go around telling lies, doesn't make any sense, does it? If you said, giving charity to people is nice, but you go around stealing stuff, doesn't work, does it? Oh. And how about a person who does salah? You know, the worship, we stand, we pray, we do, and he prays five times a day, every day, every day, every day. But he robs banks, you know, and he's like, that doesn't work. What well, is the benefit of somebody who does this, but he does the bad deeds? So there were two things that come, and this was part of the message from Muhammad in the very beginning, that he has to understand to believe correctly is important, but also to act on it. And the first order of business was to do what? Get up and warn the people. So that's the first thing that the early Muslims did. They got up and they started telling people about Allah. Now, you would think the people would be happy about that. Oh, well, thank you. You came to my house today and you told me there's only one God and I don't have to have all these gods laying around my house anymore. Don't have to go down here to this dime store and buy some little gods to carry with me. I can just ask Allah. He's always where he is and I can always reach him with what? Just a message from the heart. How nice. Well, they didn't appreciate it at all, did they? In fact, they got upset about it. They said, are you calling us to worship some new God? He said, no. This is the real God of your forefathers. All the way back to Abraham. He said, don't tell us about our forefathers. We found that they have these statues, and we're going to keep with these images, statues, and idols, and you leave us alone. Many of them got upset. But that's not a new story, is it? We heard this over and over and over with each prophet when he came to his people they always want to argue they always want to make an argument and whenever they get stuck and they lose the argument they still don't give up they just run away and be more stupid but not everybody in fact there's some really good people that when they hear the message and they start to think well everything had to come from somewhere I didn't make myself. How did I get here? What is my purpose? And then they say the magic words. We don't really believe in magic, but they say the key words, which is, Allah, guide me. Guide me? Huh? Which we were talking about before. <laughs> Dina, Sarat. Guide us to the bridge or the path, which is stucking straight. And when anybody asks for that, then Allah will guide them in his time and in his way to what he wants them to have. Now, if Allah knows that inside the person there's really something wrong, then he'll guide them the wrong way. Because they're not really sincere. They don't really mean what they say. You can't tell that. And I can't tell that. Because you don't see inside a, of the heart and see how the thinking is or the feeling. You don't know it and I don't know it. But Allah knows it, yeah? Who created them? Allah. Who owns everybody? Allah. Who's the one who gave the people a choice? Allah. So he never forces anybody. 
Allah doesn't force anybody. Isn't that nice? Think about it. Because it means even until you die, you can change your mind. Yeah. Somebody could be bad through their whole life. So bad, so evil. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, even told us about it. He said somebody could be so bad, so evil, so rotten, that he's almost in the fire. But then, what's written for him by Allah, because Allah knows what's really inside the person. He could change. He could change. And that change could cause him to become a true believer and do the right deeds. And then what? He would die and go where? Jannah. Jannah, paradise. Yeah? Somebody else? They could be so good, so sweet, so kind, so nice. <laughs> and you would say, wow, that person is for sure going to go to paradise. Because they're so nice. So close to paradise, they could almost reach in and touch it. But then, what's written for them? And Allah knows what's inside of them. It overtakes them. And then they act like somebody from hellfire. Evil, bad, mean. And they die on that, then where will they go? To hell. Because it doesn't really matter with the law that you did uh, one or two good deeds. It matters, it matters to him what's inside your heart. And that really comes out at the moment of death. But then it's too late, isn't it? So if you want to change yourself, the time to do it is when? Now, not tomorrow. Who knows if they'll live that long? So this was the message that Muhammad and all the other prophets brought. And this is what they were telling the people. But you know what happens? The shaitan. You remember the devil, right? Well, just because I haven't been talking about him doesn't mean that he hasn't been out there working, has it? Just like we know the devil works right now. He was working at the time of Muhammad. Peace be upon him. He was working double time. He was working hard trying to convince those people of the Quraysh and the Beni Hashem. Teaching them bad ways and staying with that. Because he's the one really getting him to worship these statues and idols, isn't he? And he wants them to keep on. Because he knows where they'll go. And remember what he said in the very beginning. O oh Allah. Let me live to the last human being and I'll take them all to hell with me. That's what he said. And that's what he wanted to do. And he knows if they worship other than Allah, they'll never get out of hellfire. He knows that. And that's why he wants people to worship something other than Allah. Pretty sneaky guy, isn't he? Now, we can't see him, can we? But you can hear him, can't you? So he can sneak up on you and he can start whisp, 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 whispering, whispering. And that's what he was doing to the people of the Quraysh. I think he was shouting at some of those people of Quraysh. <laughs> because they really started to get upset. Muhammad, peace be upon him, at one point, stood on a knoll, which is like, a, well, like the little small mountain behind us here, and got up there, and he was standing there, and he started calling all of the people of all the tribes, Yeah! Beni Hashem! Yeah! Beni Quraysh! Yeah, Benny so and so, he's calling all of these different tribes, and they started coming. And he was there like, like what they do when there's a warning. Because this was something that they used to do, and it was a warning. Okay, something's happened. Maybe there's a storm is coming. Maybe some uh, people are coming to attack us, or, you know? And they said, okay, come on, uh, who's calling? Who's, who's out there? That's, that's Muhammad. Oh, we know Muhammad. He's the truthful guy. He's the one that's honest. He's the one we, you know, we trust this guy. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, everybody. Let's go. Let's go. What's going on? What's going on? He's calling. Come on. Come on. Okay, we're here. What is it? He said, what if I told you on the other side of this hill, right behind me, there's an army coming. They said, we would believe you. Get your swords, guys. He said, no, wait a minute. But you believe? Oh, we believe you. We believe anything you say. You are the Sadiq. You're the telling the truth. We're with you. Go ahead. What is it? What's the news? He said, La ilaha illallah. There's only one God worthy to be worshipped. Allah. La sharika Allah, which means, and he has no partners. Wa ana rasulahi. And I'm his messenger. 
to you. Ooh. Who's calling? Who's, who's that? That's, that's Muhammad. Oh, we know Muhammad. He's the truthful guy. He's the one that's honest. He's the one we, you know, we trust this guy. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, everybody. Let's go. Let's go. What's going on? What's going on? He's calling him. Come on. Come on. Okay, we're here. What is it? He said, what if I told you on the other side of this hill, right behind me, there's an army coming. They said, we would believe you. Get your swords, guys. He said, no, wait a minute. But you believe, oh, we believe you. We believe anything you say. You are the Sadiq. You're the telling the truth. We're with you. Go ahead. What is it? What's the news? He said, la ilaha illallah. There's only one God worthy to be worshipped. Allah. La sharika Allah, which means, and he has no partners. Wa ana rasulahi. And I'm his messenger to you. They went, what? What are, you, what are you talking about? And one of his own uncles, Abu Lahab, he got so mad. He got so angry. Huh? And he used to get red. And he did. He got real red about things, you know? And that's why they called him Lahab, because he was red like a fire. Cursed. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Even it's his own nephew, he cursed him and he said, you called us out for this. Ah! He got really upset. He went mad. And his wife, she was with him. In fact, they made life miserable for Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. They did many things after that against him. So many things. Hmm. But that's okay. Wait till you find out what Allah did to them. But for right now, what I want to talk about is that the Muslims, the early Muslims, they began trying to call the people and explain Islam is to do what Allah wants you to do on his terms. Be at peace with Allah. Salam. Do what he wants you to do. Taslim. Just surrender. Just give in to Allah. Do his way. Don't do your way. Don't be mean. Don't be bad. Don't lie. Don't steal. Tell the truth. Be generous. Help other people. These are the messages that come with all the prophets. But don't do it to show for the people. In fact, keep it to yourself. And this is what Allah likes. Do it. Now, there's something else nice about this. If ever you want to know what Allah really said, you can just go and look in the Quran and you'll know what he said. You don't have to guess. And this has been preserved by Allah in the hearts and in the minds of the Muslims for 1,400 and more years. Can you believe this? And when people heard it, they repeated it and passed it to the next generation. Just like you're learning it right now from some teachers, yes? And didn't they learn it from some teachers? And they learned it from teachers. They started with teachers who heard it, from teachers who heard it, from teachers who heard it, all the way back to the people that heard it from Prophet Muhammad wasallam, And he heard it from Jibril alayhi salam, and he got it from Allah. So that's why we say it's the actual kalamatullah, the actual speech of Allah, the Quran. Now, if you have it in your hand, what is it called? If you have a book in your hand, it's called Mus'haf. It's not called Quran, it's called Mus'haf. We say Quran all the time, but actually it's Mus'haf. And it's from the word Suhuf. And Suhuf means scripture. And that's what people before had. So when you have it written down, this is like scripture. But when you have it memorized and you recite it, it's called Quran. That's when it's Quran. It's Quran when it's memorized and recited. It's Mus'haf when it's written down. Got me? Yeah. Make sense? Yes. I knew you'd figure it out. You're a smart guy. Now, here comes the Quran to Muhammad. Peace be upon him. He's teaching his friends, and some of them are accepting Islam right away. And some are going out and getting other people to accept right away. Some are taking their time thinking about it and then looking around and going, yeah, this makes sense. And they're coming into Islam. 
But a lot of them are getting upset and saying, why are you going in this religion of Muhammad? Stay away from that thing. Get out of this. Get, stop it. Come and worship these gods with us. We got a nice God over here. You don't like this God? I got a bigger one over there. You don't like a big God? We got a tiny God. What kind of God do you want? We got it. Stop worshiping the one God. Huh? That sounds strange, doesn't it? But that's what they did. Because they knew something else. They knew that along with it, they'd have to give up a lot of the bad things they did. Because people have a sense inside of them that tells them when something's really right and when something's really wrong. And if they want the wrong way, they will not like to be guided to the right way. And if they like the right way, they won't like to be misguided to the wrong way. They won't. And a person who really, really wants to be good, it's hard to make them do something bad. But a person who wants to be bad, it's hard to make them do something good. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And remember what these people used to do? They used to drink alcohol. And they got a feeling, you know, it won't be long. He's going to be telling us no drinking. Yeah, we're not going to listen to that. And another thing that they did that was really bad, really bad, they used to kill the innocent little baby girls. Remember that? Yeah. In fact, that was one of the first things that came. When the orders really started coming from Allah saying, don't do this, don't do that, when those kind of orders came, that is when the people really started getting uptight. And one of the orders is, you can't kill these innocent baby girls anymore. Now, Omar, who's one of the earlier Muslims that came later on, he did that. His own wife gave birth to a girl. And he was distraught. When he found out, he was so, so upset about this. His wife had actually hidden it from him for a while. But when he found out that the little girl going around here was his and not somebody else's, because they told him, oh, it's so-and-so's little girl. So, no. But when he found out it's his little girl, his wife was sure. Oh, he wouldn't do that now because she's a cute little thing. She comes around, holds his finger, stuff like this. And they said, that's your girl. He said, what? It's your girl. Aren't you happy? No, because the custom is we have to take her out to the desert and bury her alive. And now this is the kid that's older. It's not a little teeny baby that just was born. It's somebody we even know her, even has a name. But he was so steeped in the tradition of his people, stuck in it. Even he didn't want to do it. But he feels like I have to do it because this is what everybody does. He took that baby girl out into the desert and while he was digging and getting dirt on him, it was said that she was trying to brush the dirt out of his beard. And he put her down, put her down in the dirt, into the sand and pushed her in there and put the sand on her. And while she was dying and gasping for breath, she was squeezing his finger, holding it until she died. This is a horrible tradition. This is disgusting. This is something that you and I, we can't imagine it. And Allah hates that. Allah hates all of these kinds of oppression. Another thing that people used to do, they used to oppress the women terribly. In those days, their women had no rights. They couldn't speak up and say anything. If they did, somebody would beat them really bad. If a girl's father died and she had any money that came from her father, somebody could just come and say, I want to marry this girl and take her and take all of her money away. And she couldn't say anything about it because she couldn't own any property. She couldn't, according to their tradition. Now, not everybody followed that exactly, but those who did, it was horrible things that they did to those poor girls. And they thought that they were brave macho men. <laughs> Look at us. They would take a whip and beat the girls bad. And they could have as many wives as they wanted. And the girls could say nothing about it. That's another thing that Allah spoke about in the Quran and gave the rights to the women. 
We'll be talking about that in more detail later, too. I'm just giving you an overview, really, of some of the things that Allah said in the Quran to stop oppression at that time, and we still use it to stop oppression at this time. Unfortunately, today, a lot of people are mixed up about what real oppression is. Real oppression is to make people worship other than Allah. That's the worst thing there is. Or to stop them when they want to worship Allah. This is really bad. And Islam, number one rule is, let the people know about Islam. If they choose it, alhamdulillah. If they don't, then Allah says, la ikraha fid deen. He doesn't force anybody to come to his way. But if they do, they've chosen the right path. The Sirat al-Mustaqim. Well, this is some of the early things that happened to the early Muslims. And then it got a little tougher. In fact, it got to the point where Muhammad, peace be upon him, decided that we better start doing our salat and our prayers in a place where people won't be watching us. They used to go right by the Kaaba. But the people were worshiping these statues and idols there anyway. They used to go around the thing, the Kaaba, and they used to take off their clothes. They, they, were, they were doing crazy stuff. So the Muslims began to go out in the secluded places, away from the main areas, and do their prayers, and do their worship, and talk to each other quietly. And if anybody would like to know, let's go over here and talk about it. Because these guys were getting too rowdy, too bad. They even started fighting against the Muslims. In fact, one time, these people, this their own relatives, keep in mind, Abu Bakr, Rabbi Allah, Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, are right in front of the Kaaba. And they're talking and telling, you know, some things about Islam, about Allah. That's the main thing they're saying. Suddenly a fight broke out and they started beating them and beating them. And they beat Abu Bakr down really bad. They almost killed him. And then they started beating on Muhammad sallallahu And they were hurting them, making them bleed and knocking them out. They had to drag Abu Bakr back to his house where his mother was. And he was unconscious. He was like, oh, 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 like that. And his face swelling and his body torn up, bleeding. But as soon as he could get his mind back, he was saying, I'm Muhammad. I'm Muhammad. Where's Muhammad? Where's Muhammad? Rasulullah, the prophet of Allah. And they said, he's okay, he's okay. No, no, he wouldn't be satisfied until they took him over to see Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When he saw him, that he was all right, he's not dead, anything. He's hurt, but he's going to be okay. Then and only then would he relax. This is the love that the early Muslims had for Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So much dedication and so much love. And this is just the beginning of the things that we'll be talking about with Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his followers, and how they understood the message that came with all the prophets. And it was the message of what? La ilaha? Assalamu alaikum. Oh, oh.